Mining is a dangerous business for anyone, but the occupation is even harder for migrants working out of sight and outside of society in South Africa. Shifting the focus from oil to agriculture in Nigeria, local people in the Delta region are taking up farming in search of a new way of life. And making world-class chocolate in the world's biggest cocoa producer, Ivory Coast. Africa 54 starts right now. I'm Jocke Rogers at Channels Television here in Lagos. Welcome to the show and stay with us in the next half hour as we feature stories from around Nigeria and the continent. Hello, I'm Vincent McCorry, Voice of America, coming to you from our Studio 52 at our global headquarters here in Washington. Attention is shifting from oil to agriculture around Nigeria. And in the Niger Delta region, new indigenous farmers are springing up in Bayas Estate. Channel TV correspondent Gloria Umezoke reports. Years of agitation for larger revenue allocation from crude oil exploration in the Niger Delta region and resultant attacks on oil facilities by militants has caused damage to the nation and the region, including pollution of land and water. But with the new drive to diversify the economy, residents of the area are exploring other resources available to them. 45-year-old Waibife Billy is among several other women here in Bayelsa State who engage in processing cassava to produce a highly consumed staple food, gari. We be farmer. Any type of farmer we here. Me, when we walk this kind of walk, when we come out here at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, we de go farm, go produce gari or plantain farm. The collective effort of the farmers draws the attention of the Ministry of Agriculture during a tour of budding farms in the state. <laughs> While displaying their farm products to the minister, youths describe agriculture as the new focus and farmers express their willingness to contribute to the nation's food production capacity given sufficient support. We have been known as a, 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 a tourism state where people fight only to make money or where people kidnap, but today we said no to, the, to that kind of name. Our youth have been trained, our women, we have been training them from week to week, trying to impart knowledge in them, because they said we have this, but they are not, they are not seeing it. So we want to showcase this today and to tell the federal government, let them support us, the little we have been doing, let them support us to see if we will not do more. We must know that with agriculture, there will be so much money in this. For instance, in Bayasa State, they are building a cargo airport. No cargo plane will fly in equipment and fly back empty. That means the business will, will die from the word go. But if we invest in agriculture, it means that a cargo plane that brings oil tools will be flying out with uh, uh, agricultural produce. Then the economy and the business will begin to uh, be agitated for growth and engagement for everybody. At a town hall meeting in Yanugwa, the state capital, the agriculture minister assures farmers of the federal government's commitment to ensuring access to finance and technology. There is capital available. A lot of them have the belief that, um, you know, the model is still the old model where somebody will bring CFO and then it gets money and then it is diverted. Now, this time around, you are going to be given a loan, but it will be given in kind. They give you the seed and the fertilizer. And there is, you know, a ready market for it, and government itself is ready to buy it in case there is no off-taker. Clearly, what is now left is the political will by the government to bring this to reality. From Yanagua in Bayosa, Gloria Umezuki, Channels Television News. The fall in global oil prices has taken a huge toll on the Nigerian economy from the scarce foreign resources to rising prices of commodities double-digit inflation, name it. Now the federal government has injected more funds into the economy to bolster it, saying that most of the money will go into capital expenditure. Now what will this do for the economy? Here to tell us, or probably try to tell us, is uh, the head of business desk on Channels Television, Bosun Amofaye. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Uh, my pleasure, Jokai. Now, 
This $1.1 billion announced by the finance minister, experts believe that it's too, it's too small an amount to inject into the economy. If you look at the level of deficit that we have in terms of naira and dollar in the system, that is really small. If you talk about 160 million people, the scarcity of foreign exchange, you need to bolster the financial markets, inflation is running, heading, heading towards 20%. That's quite uh, insignificant. Look at the interest rate also uh, very high. So uh, you need to actually spend more. But again, you need to consider the fact that if you put in more cash into the system, you don't want to drive inflation higher because the level of industrial production locally or manufacturing is really low. So government will therefore then spend this money in those areas that the finance minister talked about, agriculture, and those areas that will begin to have multiplier effect. You mean having strategic plans like uh, possibly like the China is doing and Saudi Arabia and, you know, spending on critical infrastructure what can we do that's a different conversation that is the strategic plan that the uh, Buhari's administration is yet to unveil that will come at a different cost so whatever you're borrowing presently are not going into that particular strategic plan when it is unveiled but we don't have that details yet so there are plans to borrow uh, according to uh, mm -hmm. finance minister through euro bonds how will that help the economy well what you do with the euro bond is that we're, we're depleting uh, FX reserves and, and what have you on almost on a daily basis at the central bank try to hold a, a tight rein on the Naira, don't let it uh, go bonkers as it were. Uh, so you need another 1.1, with the 1 billion dollars that's about 300 billion Naira, that's still, still a drop in the ocean. Uh, if you look at the impact of the fact that the militants activities in the Niger Delta is still, uh, it taper off a little bit but the damage hasn't really been repaired and full exports of crude oil is not yet up we're still about one million barrels per day uh, to the negative side that's quite a lot of money if you uh, if you translate that even by 42 43 45 dollars a barrel oh fantastic thank you so much for joining us on africa 54 my pleasure of Omar head of a business desk on channels television in kenya a re-education if you will and employment and poverty are some of the factors blamed for the radicalization of youth in East Africa. Now, imams from Kenya have stepped up efforts to reform young people who have been swayed by al-Shabaab. Tony Anulo has the story. Coast region of Mombasa, an area inhabited predominantly by Muslim population. Here, youth radicalization has done more harm than good, especially to the Kenyan youths. Kenya, the worst affected East African country by terrorism cases, has been on the forefront in championing for support from the African Union and the United Nations countries in her efforts to neutralize the vice. To fight back, the Council of Imams in the coast region has launched a campaign support aimed at reforming youths radicalized into Islamic militia. From the mosque, imams here preach elaborating more and expounding on the meaning of jihad in Muslim holy book of Quran, urging youths to embrace peace. Jihad is spiritual struggle within oneself against sin. It's not killing of unbelievers. And the Quran is against such killings. Young Kenyan Muslims have been lured into Islamic militia through radicalized preaching, which leads them to believe that wars being fought against Muslims in Middle East countries are part of global campaign against Islam. <laughs> Unemployment, poverty, lack of education and political marginalization are key factors contributing to the Islamic radicalization of Kenyan youths. A situation, experts say, must be addressed through economic empowerment and inclusive policies. We are trying to address the issue of unemployment here to save the youths from being lured with money to join Islamic militia. Most of the youths here are slowly embracing this pilot project to dissuade them from joining extremist group. <laughs> As Muslims, we need peace. We are being nurtured to embrace peace and love to each other. Terrorism is one of the biggest threats to Kenyan, which is East Africa's biggest economic hub. Tony Onyulo for Voice of America in Mombasa, Kenya. Well, we want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover. Join the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54. And check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Coming up, in South Africa, thousands of migrant miners and are facing some serious dangers working underground. Uh, that story after the break.